So we're thinking about the resistance of something. And when you think about the resistance of something, normally you get out your own meter and you measure the resistance and say, hey, that's the resistance of it. But what you're actually talking about there are two things. You're talking about the geometry of the thing that you're measuring, plus the inherent property of the material called resistivity. Now, resistivity doesn't change for a material. It's the specific resistance of the material. It's the resistance that material puts up to the flow of electrons. Now, that is a property. What changes is the geometry. So if I take a piece of wire, uh, X length and across certain cross-sectional area, and I use my own meter to measure the resistance, I'll get a figure. If I double that length of wire, I'll get a bigger figure, because the geometry of the wire is affecting the resistance reading that we make on the ohm meter. Now, when you think about that a little bit, and we have this innate quality we call resistivity, which is denoted by rho, then the resistance is equal to the resistivity of the material times the length of the material divided by the cross-sectional area of the material. That is, if we have a block of material like this, with a length L and a cross-sectional area of A, and we measure the resistance across that material like that, then we'll get a resistance measurement for it, and that resistance measurement is clearly dependent on length and area, and there's a resistivity of whatever it's made of, copper, graphite, whatever. And if I change these factors, so I increase the surface area, because I'm increasing this, I obviously reduce the resistivity. If I increase the length, then I increase the resistivity. Now, I'm doing a lot of work, obviously, in conductive inks. When you paint a conductive ink, then thoughts about the cross-sectional area of the material become a bit of a nonsense, because notionally they have a nominal thickness, and that thickness obviously is in micrometers to nanometers thicknesses. So this cross-sectional area idea actually doesn't become useful anymore in terms of measuring it. So you look at it slightly differently. Now, if we think about that, thin film, then it has some thickness that we call T, and then it has a, a width, and obviously a length. Now the cross-sectional area is WT, the width times the thickness of the material. And we rearrange that a little bit to be rho over thickness um, times length over width, then we get a slightly different expression of it. Now, if we let that become a new figure, which we call Rs, which is the sheet resistance of the material, then instead of measuring the resistance like we did with the bulk material, what we do is measure the sheet resistance, because the sheet resistance is actually dependent on the length times the width. And this is a much more significant figure for measuring um, thin films and uh, conductivities of things like um, painted uh, surfaces conductive inks, that kind of thing. And in fact, the sheet resistance is what all the ink manufacturers quote when they quote on the conductivity of their particular ink. So what we're measuring is sheet resistance when we measure the resistance from a point-to-point -point contact on a thin film. Now obviously, you can measure point-to-point -point contacts <coughs> across a bulk material by attaching two plates, sticking a thing on the end of it, and then measuring the resistance. Or you can approximate it just by having two point contacts, two needles that you stick in your own meter either end, and that approximates it. But with a sheet resistance, you can't really do that to get an accurate measurement. If you want an accurate measurement, then you have to use something called a four probe method. The four probe method accurately measures the sheet resistance. If you can actually measure the sheet, uh, sheet resistance accurately, you have the width times the length, you can calculate the thickness of the film from that, if you know the resistivity of the material you're painting with. In order to measure a four-point probe, what you need is a specific geometric shape, and it's actually like that, actually. And this is also allowable, where you measure at least four points. Now, there is a practical method of doing it, and I have a, a little um, <coughs> resistance measuring device for measuring the sheet resistance. So remember, we're measuring sheet resistance, not resistance. So one thing I didn't make explicitly clear, that we're thinking about resistance as being equal to the resistivity times the length divided by the area. We let area for a thin sheet equal um, WT, which is the width times the thickness, then obviously we get 
and this is equal to rho over t times l over w. And this we let equal sheet resistance, so we get sheet resistance length over width. Now if we make this a square, so we make length equal to width, then this will cancel out to become 1. So what we end up with is resistance is equal to sheet resistance. So it's ex um, measuring <coughs> exactly the same thing. Um, but we call sheet resistance as the resistance as ohms per square, because it's only true as long as L and W are equal to each other. <coughs> So when measuring the resistance of a painted film, that is a thin film, a, a film of conductive ink, what we measure is the ohms per square. There's no actual um, centimetre metre measurement. We don't talk about ohms per square centimetre or ohms per square metre. It's ohms per square. Because it doesn't matter how big the square is, the sheet resistance will be the same. So if you measure across a square of one millimetre or 100 metres, it will actually be the same resistance. Now, the fairly standard way of doing that is to construct yourself a square. And that's what we've got there. Here, the copper contacts are held apart by a plastic block, the same distance as they are in length. So if I press that onto my um, sheet material, it will measure directly the ohms per square resistance, sheet resistance measurement of it. Now, you use the ohms per square resistance measurement because it makes more sense in terms of sheets. So if you want to work out what the resistance would be of a um, painted line 10 centimetres long by 1 centimetre thick, then it will be 10 times the ohms per square measurement because you're making up 10 squares of 1 centimetre by 1 centimetre, so the overall resistance will be 10 times the ohms per square. And that's how you work it out.